Make files are a very important aspect of programming. We can do a lot of different things with make files, be it compiling text files, um, deploying websites with make files, looking for changes. Lots of they're, they're a very vul or a very capable tool chain, even though it's a little bit of an older tool chain. So in this video, we want to talk about essentially how we go about constructing make files and some of the basic concepts behind make files. So with this video, you'll be able to see what the purpose for a make file is, define some terms, target and dependency. You're going to be able to compare and contrast implicit and explicit rules, which these are rules that go into the creation of a make file. Make files are very, very powerful, but they can also be somewhat cryptic because of their syntax. One of the things we do when we start to get to larger projects to automate this process that we have of building things is we use a tool called a makefile. Now there are many, many different flavors of makefiles, but really what it is is a mechanism that allows us to separate compilation. So we have this concept of a dependency, something that we are dependent upon as we're building things, and essentially something that we're going to make. So if you think about it, if you wanted to have a nice steak dinner on a grill, you have a couple of dependencies. You need charcoal, you need a match, you may need a charcoal lighter. Success of your dinner is dependent upon those items. That's the concept of a dependency. Now I will forewarn you, this is a tool with a somewhat old syntax. It's very, very dependent upon tabs versus spaces and things like that. But if you treat it with care, it actually works very, very well. So let's take a look at the structure. Make files really consist of several different parts. So the first thing is the name of the file. Ten, the convention tends to be make this lowercase since I was helped by my tool that to put together my presentation here. Makefile is called Makefile. Nothing else to it. It's either capital or lowercase. There's no extension generally used with Makefiles. The reason is, is that the tool that we use, called Make, looks for this particular file. Now we have different types of things called rules. There are implicit and explicit rules. So an implicit rule is kind of a general rule. That general rule talking about how we translate something from one format to another. An explicit rule is essentially specific. Specific to one given file that we really don't have any general purpose usage for. And I'll talk about those here when I give an example. We can have variables defining in macros. We're going to see one of those used. We can have conditional directives, comments, starting with the hash makes sense. And then we can, in rare cases, have line continu continuation with this slash sign. This is something that you will sometimes see in file make files, but it's not necessarily consistently used. So let's talk about rules. A rule basically explains how we go from a set of a dependencies, which basically are inputs, how we generate a given target. So for example, if I wanted fire, my dependency is match, fuel, oxygen, those kind of things. The target is fire. The commands that we use to do that, basically these are the shell commands that get invoked. This tab is very, very important. If this is a space, the tool will not work properly. So you need to have an editor that will properly recognize spaces versus tabs. So that's the concept of a rule. Now we have two different types of them. The first type of rule is what we call an implicit rule. Really an implicit rule is a standard way for making one type of file from another type. So for example, we know that if I wanted to make fire, I have match and charcoal and lighter fluid, and that makes fire. An implicit rule would take that information and translate it. Now in our case, we have numerous ways that we can make 
a .o file from either a CPP file, a C file, other types of assembly file, a .s file. All of those are different ways, but essentially as long as the translation steps we go through are the same, we can use an implicit rule. An explicit rule is basically standard ways for making a type of file from a specific file. So we can translate main.cpp, for example, into main.o. This maybe is different. And I can use explicit rules if I have different capabilities or different ways that I go about making things. So for example, I've been using the example of charcoal. Charcoal plus lighter fluid plus match equals fire. If I have match light, I have match light plus match makes fire. I don't need the lighter fluid. That would be an example of an explicit rule at work. So let's take a look at an example of this. Here what I have is again the calc.cpp file that we've looked at before and I have a make file. And you'll notice that it is plain old make file and I'm going to take a look at this and edit it with the nano tool. So nano make file will open my make file and we'll see that there's not really a whole lot that is tremendously specific to this file. Let me bring it over here so it's a little bit more in the center. Now what we have here are a couple different types of things. This line right here is what we call an implicit rule. It's an implicit rule because you'll see that we are taking a specific type of file, anything that ends in .cpp, otherwise known as a C++ file, and we want to be able to translate that into a .o file. The instructions that I go through for that are given right here. I use dollar sign cc, dollar sign cops, minus c, dollar sign less than. Wow, is that cryptic. So what does that mean? Well, dollar sign cc, as in many, many other scripting languages, means replace this with the contents of a variable. So in this case up here, I'm declaring cc to be a variable that has a value g++. This allows me to change the compiler version very easily by just changing what CC maps to. COPS here refers to this variable right here. This is the options for the C compiler that we're going to use. So I'm using minus O0, which means no optimization, and I'm using minus G, where minus G means I want GNU preprocessor, or the, not the GNU preprocessor, I want GNU debugger to be enabled in the code. LOPS, which I'm not using, is for linker. Really, I should put that in here. I'll put it in where it should go, which is this line right here for the linker. This here is an example of an explicit rule. It says I want to translate calc.o into calculator using this set of commands over here. Now, if we go back to the definition, these things that are on the right-hand side here, these are dependencies. This is the target. This is what I want to make. This is what I need to make it. Separated by a colon. This right here, this right here, those are all tabs. They must be tabs or things will not work properly. So from this I can build the file calculator based upon calc.o which comes from calc.cpp based on this line here couple other things I've got built into here. I have this definition of all. Most make files have this concept of all, where all builds everything that possibly exists in the project. In our case, we've only got the calculator, so make all is just going to make the calculator. The other thing that's very important is the concept of clean. Clean, what it does is it goes through and it removes everything that I have down here and gets me back to a state where I've only got my raw source code and that's it in the project. Clean is something that you also need to have in all your make files. So with that, let me save this buffer here, right to make file, and I'm going to do make all. We'll see that compile the given files, link the objects together, and we now have a calculator. 5, 12, 5 plus 12 equals 17. 
Now one of the things I might want to do as I'm actually building my code is actually save the temporary variables that I've got here. So I can go into my tool here and I can throw an option here on the compiler minus save temps like so. Now what will happen is first if I do a make clean here and get rid of a dot out that I don't want there's my two files now if I do a make all you can see that we saved our cpp, our dot i, dot o, dot s all the temporary files so cat calc.ii there we see that's the preprocessed output of the file and we can see calc.s is our assembly language code so make files are very very powerful very very capable this make file here is very very simple but it gives you the point of starting things the concept of rules the concepts of dependencies in this case explicit rules and implicit rules so we have the implicit rule right here the explicit rule right here we have the steps that we go through to actually perform these things the concept of tabs spaces all of those things so at this point you've seen make files at work you've seen how you can construct and use a make file to actually build a piece of code you've seen the terms target and dependency defined you've looked at implicit and explicit rules and seen all of this in use through the creation of a very simple make file that brings this video to a close